just listening to back in session, the time is 10, 10 a.m. December 16th, 2019. We're going to have the clerk uh, update us about time usage, if you can. Um, can you give us an update before we're at? Sure. So the prosecuting officers have four hours and 45 minutes remaining, and the respondents have five hours and 36 minutes remaining. Okay. I'm going to leave it to you to police your own time. So, I was questions here before we're back on tap. Mr. Gibson, we began talking about the situation with regard to Judge uh, Cellini. And can you tell us if you recall any situations in which Judge Cellini had input, I guess we'll call it, uh, in the courtroom clerk personnel? We have uh, the courtroom clerk that works for Judge Cellini. Her name is uh, Marisha. Um, and we have received different complaints um, about Marisha and her the way she treated fellow employees, bullying and harassing um, complaints. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so um, that was really the, the first issue that we had with Judge Tony and, and, and her clerk. And then when you say her clerk, what position, uh, what kind of clerk was this? She was actually the, the lead clerk, Marisha was. Did this cause any difficulties uh, for you in determining whether other clerks could go in there or if other clerks were in there? Sure. Um, because of uh, the personality and how work gets around um, around the, the second floor, which is where the, the clerks are, um, we started getting more and more complaints about Marisha and the, the way she treated people. So it's harder to get people to go into those courtrooms to back up or to clerk um, when they know the, the other person that they're in there with is not a very friendly person. Do you remember any, any names of the individuals for whom you had a complaint or received a complaint? Yes. The first complaint that, that I received was from Nympha. Okay. What She's you, a backup clerk. What do you recall about that? Uh, Ninfa came to my office and complained that uh, Marisha was was being mean, uh, was not talking to her, um, tossed a, a sheet of sticky pads at her. Um, she basically wouldn't allow her to get ready for court. So, you know, because that goes with the conversation between the back of the clerk and the clerk. And so that caused Ninfa a, a lot of anxiety. Do you recall a time period that this might have occurred? I don't recall the exact time period. I would say November or December of 2018. While you're, you're at it, did you talk about backup work in a clerk in the same courtroom? Is there a consistency as to where the, those clerks are located in each department when they're working? So during court, obviously they're in court together, they sit together <coughs> side by side. Um, after court, the, the clerk, most of the clerks are co-located with their attorney, with the judges. Um, there are some, uh, for instance, Judge uh, Cellini, she was on the first floor, there wasn't really an area to put a clerk there, so that clerk would be, we had to find another spot for that clerk. Um, but generally speaking, all the backup clerks were on the second floor with the management team. But in court, when they're working, they were next to each other. They were right next to each other, that's true. And this complaint came from interactions in the courtroom? Interactions before the courtroom and in the courtroom. Both. And how did you get this information? How were you involved in it? NINFA came to me personally. Uh, while I was in my office after court had ended, uh, NINFA came to me. And, and then she said she had to leave afterwards because she was sick. What, if anything, did you do with, with this information in regard to uh, Marisha the clerk? I talked to her supervisor, who was Maggie Tucker, um, to try to get a feel for what's actually going on uh, within that courtroom, what's happening with Marisha. Um, why was she acting that way? Okay, and what happened? Um, Maggie talked to Marisha about 
what actually transpired. Um, it was more of a coaching and counseling, an informal coaching and counseling, trying to divert her again um, from the way she was acting towards the, her peers. Did you talk with Judge Cellini at this time, or what do you recall? I did not talk to Judge Cellini at this time, no. Was there any, any request that you were aware of from Judge Cellini? No. Any involvement in this situation? No. What's the next thing you recall with regard to the individual operation? So we had uh, another clerk, um, and she was actually a lead clerk. Her name was Risa. Um, we were notified, when I say we, the management team in the, in the criminal division were notified by the county that uh, Risa had submitted a complaint against Mauritia, a bullying and harassment complaint with the county. Um, they have a special form that, they, that, that um, employees are allowed to fill out and give to them. Um, this is part of the county's push to, the, to try to stop the bullying and harassing that's going on throughout Clark County offices. This is a new policy you're talking about? This is a, a relatively new policy, probably within the last year. From the before this happened. Before this happened. Right, so I would say 2017, probably they instituted that, that policy. And what do you recall happened with regard to this complaint? Did you receive it? I did not receive the complaint. The, the complaint was, was filed directly with uh, the Office of Diversity, and the Office of Diversity accepted in the complaint as per their, uh, their rules or their operating instructions. Um, the, the next thing I heard about this was uh, our, our um, HR director, her name is Melody Long, uh, contacted us and said that a complaint had been filed against Marisha and that she was notified from the Office of Diversity about this complaint from Risa and the Office of Diversity asked Melody to do an investigation. Do you recall any other situations uh, with regard to this individual clerk, Marisha? Yes, um, Marisha had an issue with uh, the clerk, the DA clerk that was in Judge Cellini's courtroom. Um, that that incident was was handled by uh, Maggie Tucker. They went in and they talked it through. It was a communication issue, um, but again, it's kind of the same language was used with the, the DA clerk <coughs> in Judge Cellini's chamber, uh, Judge Cellini's department. Now, at any time through throughout all these situations. Do you recall anything that Judge Cellini may have, may have done regarding this? So, I, I received a phone call um, while it was, uh, Kim, Kim Campton was out um, on FMLA, and at that point in time, I was in charge of uh, the, that took over her responsibilities. Um, I received a phone call from uh, Judge Bennett that, um, and Judge Cellini, she indicated that Judge Cellini is in the room, that um, they both indicated that I should move Marisha out from underneath Maggie, because at that point in time, Maggie Tucker was the supervisor to Marisha, and that I should put Marisha underneath the Jennifer Adair, who's the other uh, supervisor. I asked um, both of them why I should do that. Um, they had said, um, Kim, and I think Judge Cellini indicated that Kim had told her that Kim Campbell had told her that Marisha was, was going to get moved out from underneath Maggie and put her underneath uh, uh, Jennifer Adair. Which is my confusion because I didn't understand why. And uh, Kim never told me anything about this movement, so I questioned the move. Why would I, why would I move uh, my employee out from underneath one supervisor and give him to another? Um, that causes nothing but Havoc within the, the ranks of the rest of the clerks because if they can just say that they don't like their supervisor and we will move them to a different person, we're going to be doing that all day long. So I asked them if they were the ones that are actually filing a complaint. And they both say, hey, excuse me, when you say them, Judge Bennett and Judge Cellini, okay. if they were actually filing a complaint because I had not received a complaint about what was going on with Marisha. Um, I was told that 
forgive me, I'm not sure which one of the judges said that they had heard six, six months ago prior to this conversation that Maggie was talking about Marisha to another employee, talking bad about Marisha to another employee. Uh, I again indicated to, to them both, I understand what you're saying, are you submitting a complaint? Because at that point in time, I had not got a complaint to investigate. Uh, this is just hearsay, people are just talking around the court. Um, that I was not going to move Marisha out from underneath uh, Maggie. Did you memorialize any of this? Uh, I did. I put it in a memo for record for myself. Would you take a look at the Commission Exhibit 1 on page 166? <clears throat> you recognize that document? Yes, this is the memo I wrote for myself um, with the conversation I had with Judge Bennett and Judge Chilini. So the date would be correct that it says March 5th, 2019? Yes. And does that describe what you just testified to? Yes, it does. Did you understand at that time why Judge Bennett was involved in it? I had no clue. The whole thing took me, took me by surprise. I didn't know why Judge Bennett was involved. Um, was she the chief judge? She was not. She was... Was she over, uh, was she one of the judges for whom Marisha worked? No. She was not the presiding judge in criminal. She was, not, I, I don't know why she was involved. Is that uh, something that was new, unusual, unusual? Uh, it was unusual because I never had two judges, I, I never had Judge Bennett call me about something that wasn't concerning her. And the second portion is that I had not heard from Judge Selene. Anything that happened after this incident you just talked about? You said you did not move Marisha at that time. How was it left? We had Marisha's um, shortly thereafter. Um, I went on vacation, um, and the new the interim court administrator um, moved Marisha out from underneath Maggie and put her underneath Jennifer while I was on vacation. In your tenure as the, the administrator for criminal division in your other capacity, did you come to have a any knowledge of how uh, Marisha did as a clerk with her actual duties? Were you aware of that? Yes, yes I was. Um, so your we, Marisha is actually a, a pretty good clerk itself. Um, it's just that her personality and her attitude get in the way and that causes a lot of uh, anxiety throughout the throughout the rest of the employees that work in, uh, in and around her. While we're on that subject, to go back to the individual we talked about and say, do you recall how he was as a clerk? Did you know that information? Yes, I did. Um, Jose was not a great clerk. He's probably an average to below average clerk, um, backup clerk. <coughs>
questions are represented to you that Kim, uh, by Judge Jolini, that Kim wanted the move to occur? In other words, the move to Mauritius supervisor elsewhere? Yes. And that was never relayed to you by Kim? It was never relayed to, to me by Kim. Do you recall, uh, let's move to a different area here. Do you recall which court departments are on the 8th floor? Can, can you say that again? Which court departments are on the 8th floor? Yes. Um, when I worked there, it was uh, Judge Zimmerman. And forgive me, I can't remember the, the correct departments um, that they were in. Um, it was Judge Zimmerman, Judge Tobias, and Judge Sassento. And Judge Bennett, I believe. Did you have occasion to be on those floors as part of your duties? Yeah, it's, it points during the day. We would be on the seventh and eighth. You know, those are our floors for the justice court. Now, I want you to describe your relationship with each of these with judges, Judge Spies and Judge Chalini, during your tenure, from about January 2014 until your termination, of July 3rd, 2019. First, let's talk, talk about Judge Tobias. And can you describe for us uh, your knowledge of her, your uh, any personal professional relationship? With her? I really didn't have a relationship with, with uh, Judge Tobias, other than you know strictly the uh, professional relationship. In, in that, if there were issues, um, I probably talked to her twice. Um, that. Um, yeah, that was about it with, with, with Judge Tobias and um, Judge Sweeney. I, when she very first took the bench, and I forgive me, I can't remember when she took the bench. I think it was in 16, 2016 or 2017. We have an indoctrination with the new with the new judges. I spoke to her at that point in time, um, obviously just giving her an overview of what we did in the civil department. Um, after that, very few personal interactions with her. If, if 
half of the people are getting by with things and the other half are not getting by with things. That just causes hate and discontent within the, within the division. And, and when I got in there, there was a lot of hate and dis discontent within the division um, because there was a lot of talk within the, the clerks that there was favoritism being played by, by some um, judges to clerks. And that if somebody was to get in trouble, they would not get, you know, they would just go to their judge and their judge would alleviate that, that issue and that, that it never happened. What effect, if any, did you mention, you mentioned a couple times that each of these judges was swearing in some way. What effect did that have uh, in your mind? Which is not professional. I mean, it's high school type talk in, in a professional organization such as you know, the, the, the courthouse, and it, it just, I don't think it's professional at all. And it's, it's really not good to put in front of um, the, the clerks. Let's move on and talk about uh, who your supervisor was uh, during your, your career at the Justice Court. Who was your last supervisor? My last supervisor, <coughs> I guess it was uh, Chief Judge Bottom. Um, I'm not sure. Was never the judges. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was never changed uh, over to the interim, the interim court uh, administrator. So I guess my last one was Judge Bottom. And before that uh, was Kim Camplin. So you previously testified you were terminated on March 20. Excuse me, that she was terminated on March 26th by Chief Justice Bachman, do you know why? I do not know why. You indicated that you were terminated on July 3rd. At the time you were terminated, have you been aware of an investigation with regard to Judge Bias and Julie? No, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of the investigation specifically referring to these two. I was, in, I was notified, um, I was on vacation I came back from vacation at the end of June, so I arrived back at work around the July 1st. Um, I was told by Melody Long, who was our, our um, HR department, that um, I needed to speak with um, an investigator, his name was Adam, and that we needed to set up an appointment and he would like to discuss some issues with me. And did that discussion happen? That discussion. Uh, so uh, I, I called, or Adam called me the next day because uh, we set up a time. Um, so would, they, would that be the second? That would be the second. Okay. And he would wanted to talk to me and Elizabeth at the same time because apparently Elizabeth was out of the office at the same time I was. Um, I think she was getting her wisdom teeth taken out. So um, Adam asked me if I would see if I could contact Elizabeth and see if July 5th was a, a good day, that, which was a Friday, to get together and discuss his investigation. And did that happen? That, that invest, yes. Um, so I got with, with, uh, with Elizabeth. Um, I called Adam back, told him July 5th would be a good day. I let our HR department know, which is Melanie Long, that we were going to be in an investigation meeting with Adam on July 5th and at different times. And I think it was 10 and 12 or something like that were the times that we were set. And we subsequently met. And we subsequently met on July 5th. But in the meantime, that's when you were terminated. In the meantime, I was terminated on July 3rd. Can you describe for us how you were terminated? Sure. Um, Again, I came down from a meeting, um, a criminal meeting, with uh, a couple of the judges. Uh, judge Cruz, who's the, the vice judge, um, a couple other judges came down. I was called by Melody Long, who is the HR department, um, to come see her. I went to see her. She handed me a sheet of paper that said that I'd been terminated, uh, that my services were no longer required, um, and that I needed to hand my badge in and my key, and that I was going to be escorted out of the building. By the way, Marshals. Was this a, expected by you? Was it a surprise? It was a surprise to me. I knew there was something going on within um, within the court after Kim um, was uh, was terminated. Um, just the different actions that were happening at that, that point in time with the interim court administrator. Um, so. Uh, 
I was actually surprised I got, I got terminated, but um, it, just the actions that led up to me kind of led up to it kind of gave me the hint that there was something actually going on. What was, what was the environment like while you were working at the time? Um, it was, so after Kim left, it was an odd environment. It was um, um, very touchy. Um, there was a lot of, of, for example, I asked several different occasions to talk with the interim court administrator about getting feedback on what her expectations were. I never, I never heard back from her, never got a meeting with her to, to know what the expectations were. Um, it, so you could just feel like the tension was growing within there. Um, the, the, the environment in there was just a totally different environment. Um, they kind of shut me out of all the conversations that were happening within, you know, as division administrators. So... And when you say they, who are you talking about? I would say the chief judge and, and Rizal. Any others? The others? I would say so. Um, I would say Sherry Paris was part of that too. Have you seen Sherry Paris today? Yes. Is she, is she here today? Yes, she is. Where is she? She's sitting fourth row up. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you have any ideas or concern or beliefs of your own at that time as to why there was this difficulty in your mind? I didn't understand what the, what the difficulty was. Now at this time, your the administrator or acting administrator was Ms. Hernandez. Is that correct? That's correct. And have you had any uh, interactions with regard to Ms. Hernandez or with regard to uh, something that might have offended her? I'm, I'm not sure. I, um, I know her her sister tried to get um, promoted on a couple different occasions. I did not promote her and from a, a backup clerk to a clerk position. Um, I felt that she was upset about that, 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 that I should have hired her. Um, there were other occasions when um, she was very difficult to deal with. Um, it, it just was an odd environment dealing with, with Brazil. Does any incident stand out to you? Yeah, the main the main incident was uh, just when when she got she got put into the position as interim court administrator. It was kind of shocking to me, um, given her experience level. Um, I just just didn't understand it. And then <clears throat> at some point uh, they promoted, and when I say they, it was uh, Sheriff Paris, the chief judge, and Grizel promoted uh, her sister into a clerk position as an acting clerk position. Um, an email was sent out by Grizel to uh, our HR manager, whose name is Melody. Um, I happened to be on there as well, on that email, um, saying that words to the effect that uh, her sister was going to get promoted. And I said that there's an ethical issue here and that I think it needs to be looked at um, because it's the as, as even though you're interim, as the court administrator, it's an ethical issue that uh, you're promoting your, your sister above others. Um, it went to Melody. Um, Melody indicated that there was no issues, there's no ethical issues, and so I dropped it at that point in time. Was there any time when you were in charge of your division that uh, you had to, to leave? You might have. Uh, had to place somebody in charge, you might say? Yeah, so typically when Kim left, um, she would put either Sherry or myself in charge um, uh, of, the, of the department, um, the Las Vegas Justice Court. The last time um, Kim was out on family medical leave, I was put in charge by Kim and uh, the chief judge. And I, had to, I was going on vacation for a couple days. And during that time, um, it was typical for us to put somebody else in charge while you were out because you never know what issues may arise that require uh, 
the deputy court administrator to, to take action on those cases. So I sent an email to all, as typical, I sent an email to all the, the acting, um, not the acting, to all of the court administrators, the department of court administrators, letting them know that Elizabeth was going to take a stick, which was going to take a lead during those two days that I was out on vacation. Um, I later received an email from Brazil to the chief judge that indicated that um, she didn't think it was right that I that I gave Elizabeth that position and that she was not going to follow words to that effect, that she was not going to follow whatever Elizabeth said and that there were other people more qualified than her that should be leading um, the department. Did you, was there anything that you'd seen, in other words, is there an exhibit that you've seen that reflects this? Yes, um, there's a, the, the email that she sent um, Judge Baca, um, when I was going through the exhibits, I did see it in there. Look on page 96 of Exhibit 1. And it goes from 96, 97, to 98. Yes. Are those the documents you were talking about? That is. So it appears to be an email string. Is that correct? Starting from the last page uh, is, where, is where it began, February 20th of this year? That is correct. And when you say Elizabeth, who are you talking about? I'm talking about Elizabeth Coda. She was at that point in time, she was the traffic um, administrator. And when Ms. Hernandez responded, is that her email on page 97? Yes, that is. And what does, what does that report to show as far as experience of, of those supervisors? So for some reason, she, she highlighted um, everybody's experience level throughout the court. Um, but obviously, she's at the bottom of the list um, in terms of experience as an administrator. Um, I think what she was trying to get across was Sherry and Anna both had more experience than Elizabeth. Therefore, they should be put in charge at that point in time. And how did this end up as far as your concern? So I emailed back the chief judge, and I asked her what she wanted me to do. Um, and then I indicated to her that I did follow the, the ranking structure, um, but that Anna was, uh, Anna Vasquez, who's the Anna that's referred to on here, was sick. Um, she was out for some reason. Um, and Sherry was out on, vac on vacation or somewhere. I'm not sure where Sherry was. She didn't notify me that she was, you know, what, she, what was going on. So I went to the next best person, which would have been Elizabeth. Were you aware, aware of any other indication as to what Ms. Hernandez thought of, of Elizabeth's code? Yeah, I mean, she would refer to Elizabeth as Elizabeth. How often did you hear that? Um, on a couple different occasions. Let me ask you a couple more questions. Did you encourage anyone to file a complaint? Against judges twice in the I did not. Did you file any complaints against these judges? I did not. Before or after you were coming? I did not. Anything else? We have nothing further.
We will take this case under submission. That would require proof by very significant evidence. You, you both uh, did a good job bringing all this to my attention. I'm going to make a record about you in a minute. You need to sit down and be quiet. The court finds in the best interest of the minor child and makes the following findings. For the record, I don't say these things to hear myself talk. An absolute decree of divorce is granted. By September 6, you will pay $6,000 of what is due. Thank you, cross examination for respondents, counsel. Go ahead, Mr. Terry. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You were interviewed by the uh, investigator on July 5, 2019, correct? Yes, sir. And you indicated in response to some of the questions that you were not aware of the commission's investigation until slightly before that, correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. How much before that? When I talked to Adam, which would have been on July 2nd. Okay. And that would be the first time you would have been aware of it? That would have been the first time I was aware of it. All right. What is a backup clerk? A backup clerk usually gets, um, well, they have a couple of different jobs. One of the jobs uh, for a backup clerk is to prepare the calendar for the next day. Um, and typically, what time would they get there in order to do that? Different times. We have different, there was different times because we have different courts going on at different times. They would launch off at different times. So anywhere from 6 in the morning to maybe 7, 7.30. So that's part of their responsibility. To arrive to work? Right. Yes. And to do that job. Yes. Are you talking about the clerk or the backup clerk? I'm talking about the back. I thought you said backup. That was the question. Yes. Right. What else? Uh, so they get the calendars together for the next day. Um, once the calendars are together, they go into the court. They check in. Um, whoever's coming in, which is the attorneys or the public, um, they accept cash. Um, they assist the clerk while in the courtroom with making copies or other things, pre uh, preparing the calendar. Now, the things you just described are things that are going on during the court process. That's right? correct. So, for example, Judge Eliason <coughs> was the domestic violence judge from 2013 to 2017, correct? That's, and that, that, well, I'm not sure. I, I wasn't there in 2013, so I can't say that. That was the only domestic violence court at that point in time, correct? 2013? 2013 to 2017. I wasn't there in 2013, so I, I can't speak on that. How about 2017? 2017, I believe she was, but I was in the criminal department. And once again, that was the only domestic violence. Department. I believe so at that point in time. Okay. Did you ever keep track of how many cases went through that department on a daily basis? I think at one point in time we did for Judge, uh, Judge Bonaventure. He wanted the stats um, because I think they talked at a judge's meeting. Um, okay. Just try to answer my question. Sure. I'm on a time link here. Sure. So the answer is yes? Yes. Okay. Roughly 150 cases a day, would you agree with that? I, I don't know. I can't okay. answer that. You wouldn't dispute it, though. I wouldn't dispute that, no, I wouldn't. Okay. So one judge, a backup clerk, and a clerk, correct? Yes. And obviously there's a court reporter and a marshal, etc., but we're not focusing on that. Now, you were aware that Jose had been 
the backup court for Judge Tobias then for in excess of five years, correct? No, I, I didn't know that. Okay. Would you be surprised to know that? Not surprised, no. Okay. And one of the things that the investigator asked you was whether or not you were in charge of assigning people, clerks, to departments, and you indicated no, correct? It depends on what department. Okay. He asked you. Um, Can we have a reference, Your Honor? Sure. It is his interview. I have it marked as page 12 of his interview. Okay. Time is 009050. It says, I don't really assign people to departments. Would that have been an accurate presentation? Depending on what the question was before that, but I think, yeah, I'll call him what I said. And what would be your job to do that? That's my job. How is this process completed? Well, when I got there, when I first got in there, it was a matter of a lot that had already been done. Over the process of years, people have been assigned to departments. I didn't really assign people to departments. Right. Did I read that right? Right. Okay. And you also indicated in response to the question, is it unusual for a judge to have input as to who their clerk is? You indicated, well, they do. That's correct. So it wouldn't have been unusual. Would not have been unusual. So assuming that Jose had been Judge Tobias's clerk for five years, and assuming that Judge Tobias didn't handle a caseload of roughly 150 cases a day, and none of the complaints that you testified to in reference to Jose dealt with his work product, would that be correct? None of the complaints I was referring to today, that's correct. Okay. And when I talk about work product, it's like, oop, I messed up, and the guy got left in custody because I messed up, correct? That's, that's one, okay. yes. The backup clerk and the clerk have critically important jobs, yes. correct? But the ultimate responsibility would always fall on the judge, is that correct? I would say that's true, yes. Okay. So if the clerk or the backup clerk makes a mistake, the ultimate responsibility would fall upon the judge, and therefore the criticism would fall upon that judge, correct? I would say depending on what the mistake was. Okay. Now, let's talk about the Jose situation specifically. You said that there were complaints against Jose. Were any of those in writing? Yes. Did you have those? I do not. You seem to have a knack of emails, et cetera, et cetera, and suddenly we don't have any complaints against Jose. Your Honor, could I make a reference? That was a question. Go ahead, Mr. Hutchinson. I'd like to represent that as this is an ongoing investigation, we have issued subpoenas for the records of the type that Mr. Terry is speaking about, which are human resource documents, to the county. We have not, we have been rejected at this point, so we're still trying to obtain the kinds of documents which Mr. Terry is talking about. That doesn't do us any good, and I say that respectfully. We move for a continuance of this hearing well in the inception of this case just to try to avoid this problem. That was denied. We have to accept the commission's ruling. I understand that. But we can't keep hiding behind the oops, we didn't get that record scenario when we're in this type of a hearing. Only the third one that's ever been done, to the best of my knowledge, where there's an attempt to remove a judge, suspend a judge, prior to the time that there's a formal complaint about it. That's my record. Thank you, Mr. Terry. I'm allowing you to make your record. It is what it is. It is what it is. You're right. So I think where I was going is in reference to Jose. And I had built up the question as five years in the department, 150 cases a day. If the court messes up, the ultimate responsibility and criticism falls on the judge, correct? Now, that would be the same as to Judge Cellini, too, correct? Yes. The importance of the clerk, et cetera, et cetera. So let's discuss how the administration handled the Jose situation. You said you met with Judge Letitia, correct? Yes. And you did? I personally did. And who else went with you? Just me. Okay. Was that the same day that you had directed 
or that anyone had directed that Jose be removed from Judge Tobias's court? I don't know if it was the same day. I think it was, though. I don't think it was, and I'm going to tell you why. See if this refreshes your okay. memory. Judge Tobiasen gets an email. And if you dispute any of these facts, please tell me. Okay. Judge Tobiasen gets an email while she is driving to court, or a text, one or the other, while she is driving to court that day that Jose is going to be removed from her department. Does that refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. So you're meeting with- What is that day? You're meeting with Leticia in reference to the movement of her court, and Jose had to be before that time, correct? Yes. I don't know. Okay. You didn't talk to Judge Tobiasen before that meeting. That is correct. Yes. Okay. So let's pretend I'm Judge Tobiasen. I'm going to work. It's a happy day. I got a great clerk, right? Black up clerk. And suddenly I'm told your backup clerk is getting moved. Was it unreasonable for her to not be happy with that? No. Okay. She called for a meeting, correct? I don't remember at that point in time her calling for a meeting. Now, I got a little confused. Were you on vacation at this point in time, or were you there? I'm kind of confused by the dates, because when I talked to Judge Leticia, I was actually at work. Okay. And it's the next week that I actually went on vacation. Okay. That was when she asked me about a meeting, to discuss a meeting. Judge Tobiasen requested a meeting, correct? Correct. Did she ask if there were any written complaints against Jose? I don't remember that. Do you recall her saying, have any, where are the complaints? Yes. I did recall her saying that. And did you provide those to her? I did not. Did your emails reflect, those emails that you spoke to my colleague, did those emails reflect the names of any of those individuals, or what their complaints were in reference to Jose? What emails are you referring to? Any emails. No. Okay. Emails to Judge Tobiasen? To either Judge Tobiasen or Judge Leticia. No. Okay. The clerk that you wanted to move out of Leticia's court was named Rita, correct? Correct. And that clerk would have gone into Judge Tobiasen's court, correct? That is correct. And that would have been without any input from Judge Tobiasen, correct? That's correct. Okay. So when you talk about this blacklist, was Rita on that list? And let's be clear what that was. That was only a list that said, I would appreciate, in effect, I would appreciate it if you don't put clerk X in the court. Is that right? For some, that was probably it for some of the judges. Okay. And typically it's because those clerks couldn't handle it, correct? No. Okay. Were there personality issues? Could be. Did you document those? In different ways. Yes, we documented those. Were those emails or faxes or texts or anything? Well, those facts, they're not, they're disciplinary issues if there's a personality conflict, if there's a personality issue. Well, if there's a disciplinary issue, is there a complaint against, and let's take Jose as an example. Right. Was there a complaint filed against Jose? As in a written complaint? Right. There were written complaints against Jose. Okay. So he would have been entitled to get a copy of those, correct? No, not necessarily. He would have been entitled to a hearing? No. Have you read the contract, the labor contract? Yes. Okay. And he would have been entitled to have a union representative, correct? If we were going down a disciplinary avenue. Okay. So that would just mean you weren't going down a disciplinary avenue, correct? At the beginning, no. You're correct. Okay. So at the time that you were, quote, moving Jose, telling Judge Tobias and that on the same day, there were no formal complaints and no disciplinary actions pending against Jose, correct? Correct. Formal complaints as in, what is your term as formal complaints? Formal complaints. A complaint to me? A formal complaint, a written formal complaint. There was a written formal complaint. Where is that? To me. It was in my email when... Well, where is that? You probably have to ask the county. Was he provided with a copy of that complaint? 
complaint. He was not. He was not. So we have a complaint not provided to Jose. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Can I interject? Mr. Hutchins, you recognize? At this point, I need to make another representation because we're talking about emails of Mr. Denson. We've made a request again by subpoena for emails of the county of various individuals some time ago as a part of the ongoing investigation. We have not received those. So noted. Thank you. And you know my position. That doesn't help. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Please proceed. Thank you. So do you recall having had a meeting with Judge Tobias and Judge Leticia? Yes. Okay. In reference to the movement? The movement of the two clerks? Yes. Now, ultimately, the movement didn't occur, correct? Correct. Did not occur for what reason? That Judge Tobias didn't, we were going to come up with, Judge Tobias was going to come up with a different solution on what we needed to do with Jose. So at that point in time, we didn't need to move Rita. Okay. But it was still your decision, was it not, to ultimately move Jose? In other words, you were the final say. Correct. At that point, I felt I was. And Jose wasn't moved out of that department. He continued there. That's correct. And is that consistent with certainly the judges have a right to say who their clerks are? That does have something to do with it. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And one more time, it had nothing to do with Jose's ability in a courtroom environment. That's a good answer. With, I'll expand on that. Go ahead. With the public, correct? Can you please repeat that? Sure. It had nothing to do with Jose's ability to deal with the public. The complaints? Correct. The complaints I received, that's correct. Okay. Nothing to do with his ability to take care of the work tasks. Would that be correct? The complaints I received, that's correct. Okay. So he was functioning fine as a backup clerk in Tobias's court. Correct. He was average. That's fine. But Judge Tobias was happy enough to go to bat for him, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And do you accept the fact that domestic violence court is a much different court than, for example, a traffic court? Yes. Okay. The atmosphere is just completely different in that court, correct? Yes. Okay. And, of course, none of your complaints dealt with complaints against Judge Tobias in the courtroom environment, correct? No. Those were my actions on the bench. No. Okay. So I am— So, yes, you are correct. All right. Now let's switch over to Judge Cellini for a moment. Same situation with Judge Cellini. She's advised that there's a court that you're going to move, correct? She is not happy about that, correct? Correct. She has input in reference to the court being moved, correct? I don't ever think that we said we were going to move Marisha from her department. Okay. So it was only the fact that you had issues with Marissa as she dealt with other people, correct? Coworkers. Correct. Coworkers. And if I understood your testimony, of course you did, because I have that court commission. No problem. I apologize. The complaint against Marissa had to do with being mean. Marissa was mean to somebody, a staff member, correct? A fellow staff member. A fellow employee. Okay. What was that fellow employee position? Which complaint? The first one or the second one? The first one. A backup clerk. Okay. Now, a backup clerk. This was a trainee backup clerk, correct? Incorrect. Okay. She was a regular backup clerk? Yeah. NIFA had worked there for six or seven years. Okay. In what department? In different departments where NIFA had worked. So she hadn't worked with Judge Cellini except on an on and off type basis at best, correct? At best. I think you're correct. All right. Mean? Not talking to her? And throwing a sticky pad? Correct. Did NIFA tell you that she had asked for the sticky pad? In other words, 
Did you need a sticky pad? She did not. Okay. And that was basically it, correct? From what I can remember, right? And she was so upset she got sick and went home. That's correct, right? Okay. And did you speak with Judge Shalini about this? I did not. Okay. So just like Judge Tobiasen, before you attempted to move Jose, you did not extend her that courtesy. In reference to Judge Cholini, you did not extend her a courtesy of speaking to her in reference to NINFA or in reference to uh, her regular clerk in that department, correct? That's correct. Okay. <coughs> You indicated in your direct examination that you didn't really interact with either Judge Shalini or Judge Tobias in that much, correct? That, that is, that's true. Where was your office? On the second floor. Okay, and uh, where was Judge Shalini's office? First floor. And when I say office, if it, the office is different than where the courtroom was that they occupied, would you advise the commission? So that is started? true. So uh, Judge Shalini was on the first floor. Um, is that what you're kind of right? In her courtroom for a period of time was the same one. At some point in time, I can't remember the date, she moved, she kept her chambers uh, or her, her office on the first floor and moved her courtroom up to the eighth floor. But her office was still on the first floor. Was still on the first floor. Was it come up a later point in time when she moved to the eighth floor? Her office. I, I, I don't remember her moving her office up to the eighth floor. It All right. may have been after I left. And would I be correct, Judge Tobias's office and courtroom were on the eighth floor? That is correct. And we had Judge Bennett at that point in time and Judge Zimmer. <coughs> that is correct, yes. So would it be accurate that you certainly didn't see Judge Tobias and or Judge Cellini on a daily basis? I, I did not. But more likely than not, those judges that occupied that same floor or the same floor with the courtroom did see the two judges? More often than not, yes. Okay. You also indicated that the judges had little impact on any types of terminations, correct? That's correct. So would be be correct that Judge Tobias had never came to you and said, I want this, this individual fired? She never came to me with that. That's correct. Never threatened in any way that she wanted an individual fired or you would be in some type of trouble? No. How about the same questions in reference to Judge Cellini? No. Judge Cellini or Judge Tobias had had anything to do with your termination, is that correct? I don't know. You were in fact terminated by Judge uh, uh, Bob, correct? That's correct, she signed a letter, yes. And you were an at-will employee. That's correct. Unlike the clerks at work in both Judge, including Judge Bob's court, but certainly Judge Cellini's court and Judge uh, Tobias's Correct. That's correct. Because they're protected by the discipline process and by the union, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, the SEI. Yes. Now, your interview was done on July 5, as you indicated. And you were terminated on July 3 of the same year, correct? Yes. So two days after you get terminated, you gave the interview to the uh, investigator. Yes. Correct. Did he ever attempt to contact you again? Yes, he did. And when was that? I, I, I can't remember the date. Was that a recorded interview also? No. Not as far as I know. Okay. May I have the commission's indulgence for me? Yes.
Chairman, I have nothing further to write back on. Pass it to Mr. Patero. Okay, Mr. Patero, if you're going to wonder about Mr. Patero, I'll ask that you grab that handheld mic there and oh, okay. speak into it so you can get it back. Mr. Benson, you were a uh, terminated. I'm sorry, that's that's a little loud. You're echoing. I know the part of the back crosses. Is that anybody? Can't do it this way. Yes. Never. Yeah. Loud enough, we can hear you. Is that what you're saying? I can't hear anything now. Am I not hearing anything? I think. I've never been accused of talking soft. That's why this is a perfect and interesting thing. Yes. Okay. Now, 
In your statement, could I ask that the record reflect there was a significant hesitation from the witness in answering that question? The record is all fact. That's because you're answering the question you wanted to think about it. But what I was saying was correct, and you said yes, right? Yes. Thank you. Now, in your statement but today, in your testimony today, you talked about overhearing uh, Judge Shalini talk uh, to Kim Kaplan, correct? That's correct. And that she used uh, uh, some, uh, street slang. Yes. And, and I didn't know, say street slang, but what? I, I, I didn't use street slang, but I think. You didn't use it, but. Right. I mean, it's kind of person that is, in fact, street slang. Right. Sure. Well, take my representation that I looked that up in the dictionary of uh, uh, street slang, if you will. There's a book out there that does that, and that is known as a, a friendly greeting. Objection. He's testifying. Mr. Vittari will respond to this. Okay. That's right. I'll let me go on. Okay. One other thing that on this, this conversation, in your statement, you never mentioned it. Okay. Huh? No, I didn't. So you were, you were given by uh, Inspector Adam, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name, but the, the inspector ought to say whatever he wanted about uh, Judge Chilling, right? That's correct. Right? And you didn't mention that at all? It did not. Now, one of the problems that, that, that I see with this is you keep using the term complain, et cetera, those other terms. There's a, there's a union contract, isn't there? Yes. And it has a Platte County and SEIU, right? What's that? Yes. With the country. To the supplement. Yeah. If you would look at, we have a supplement there, and you can add to the next to last. We had marked it as Exhibit G. Do you see that? I don't think it's in the, excuse me. I approach. Yes, go ahead. I don't think it is. It's in this thing. Okay. This is the earth. G. Should have said G. Gotcha. And G uh, is section 11, article 11, and then there's section 1, discipline. And you propose to two. Hold on, sir. The last one I have is E40. Is there? Yeah, that's the one I have. Page 12. E, E12? Okay. Go. Yeah. And that is a G, and is it a G? I, I don't. I have. That's I think there's a letter right in front of the number. It's a D, D4 act a little bit. Oh, sorry. goes down to section two? Yes. All right. And, and section two defines what a coaching conflict is, correct? <laughs> section two, page 12. See page 12? Yes. Go down there where it says section two. You see it? Okay. It says prior to formal uh, progressive discipline, uh, supervisors manage to engage in coaching and counseling of employee, correct? That's correct. Now the coaching and counseling is not a form of discipline, this under the union contract. It is not. Okay. But the coaching and counseling is, if it is given a coaching and counseling, a written record must be provided to the employee, summarize the coaching, in counseling and will not be maintained in the official personnel file. Correct? 
That's what, yes. All right, so when we talk about complaint, I'm talking about under the contract. Okay. And with Marisa, on the situation with this ANEMPA, there was no coaching council. That's correct. Okay. So when we talk about it, we don't have that. The only coach and counseling comes with someone named Risa. That is correct. Okay. And the coach and counseling, and so we will not find any written uh, on the NEFA uh, uh, allegation in her personnel file, would we? You wouldn't have it either way because it doesn't go in her personnel file. Okay. That's correct. Right. Correct. And it can't be used in an evaluation. That there is no way. I'm not sure about that. But. Well, it says you can't put it in the evaluation. Well, it's, <coughs> it, it, let me just go on. Okay. Because we're time sure. constrained. So what we have is the NEPA thing did not go to a coaching counseling with a formal letter. That's correct. All right. The one with Risa did. That is correct. All right. And the one with Risa, you were involved in. That's correct. And we have that as, uh, where are these? What's the exhibit number four? Now, we have the first one we have is the, the evaluations. Evaluations, uh, said if you need to sum it up, she's a, a pretty good employee. Um, I can't speak on the 2017 ones because I wasn't in there, sure. but the 2018 she is, yes. Okay. Now, but if the, the last one she did, the 2019 one, do you have that there? Okay. It's in view. issue actually with the situation with Maggie Tucker. Yes. And if she and which is her right, she can file that with personnel. Yes. The and HR. Because, yes. And the issue she's taken with is one Maggie Tucker during this period of time and she filed a complaint against Maggie Tucker. You aware of that? I was not. Uh, but if you look there, it says she didn't do a coach, she didn't take the class. And what she's saying is, and her thing is, I was given an email, I was given my coaching counseling, and I was told that you would set the class up. 
over a reset. Correct? Are you saying that that's what it says in here? Yeah, take a look at it. E039, that helps the commission. Not from me, from Maggie. Well, Maggie. What you're saying? Okay. You're saying Maggie should have done it. That's what it indicates on here. Okay. And in there, you're looking at the email. Did she send your emails? And on the there. last page. Huh? Yes, on the last page. And what, and what did she say there? What did she say that you, the, you people, you being in the administration, never set the class up for? I'm not sure what you're... Are you talking about the email on the last page? Is that she, that's that's an email from Melody to Mauritia. And what does it say? Um, in meeting with you today is a summary of the meeting. Please be more proactive. Your manager and or supervisor will meet with you to help you build these skills and discuss any issues you may be experiencing in the performance of your job. In addition, you will be enrolled in an ODC course, Respect for Communication in the Workplace, when the course becomes available. Okay. And did you ever set her up on that? I did not know. And are you aware no one did? I was not aware of that. Okay. Hey, but that's what she's complaining about. You put in the someone put in the evaluation, she didn't take this course, and she's saying no one has ever set the class up for it. Right? I, I take it that's what she's saying. I wasn't there. Okay. Now <clears throat> when you were talking about administration and all these things, um, Concerning uh, uh, Grisel not, Grisel not being qualified, um, <coughs> Judge Chiellini never spoke to you about it, did she? No, sir. And neither did Judge Tobias. No, sir. And uh, you know, with, with Judge Chiellini, when we go back to the Marisa incident, and Judge Judge Chiellini and Judge Grant called you, right? Yes, sir. And they asked that you make a uh, move. That's yes. move Marisa right. uh, not to be supervised by Maggie. That's correct. All right. Now, that was basically two judges calling the acting court administrator. That's correct. And that's who they're supposed to talk to, right? That's correct. There was nothing improper than calling you, was there? I, I think Judge Bennett probably calling probably didn't have a bearing. Well, you understand Judge Bennett had been the chief judge for a number of years. Yes. Okay. You and you also know that you, uh, Judge Bennett had a, had a, a pretty uh, firm understanding of what the administration of justice go for. Yes. Okay. And so Judge Bennett and Judge did, and, and Chalini called you, and you don't do anything. That's correct. Well, you know, let's see here, here's the thing. The complaints against uh, uh, Judge Chalini and Judge Tobias is they make you do things you don't want. You just flat out turned it down, didn't you? Yes, I said I wasn't. Yes. Okay. And she never called back, or you never had any feedback that, that well, concerning it, did you? No. Huh. Now, you don't take issue with the chain of custody, do you? I mean, the chain of, uh, of, uh, of responsibility in Justice Court. Are you talking about the Kim Me, you know, or whoever? Yeah, no. And the main person over the, the top person in Justice Court is the Chief Judge, right? That's correct. And the chief judge is the person who uh, uh, supervises or is the or the, uh, the court administrator. That's right. The deputy, yeah. Okay. Deputy clerk, court administrator, yes. Right. And that, that was Kaplan, or Kim. Yes, at one point in time, yes. Right. So if the chief judge wants to do something, then she can direct that, and you have no problem with that. Yes, if she wants to, yes, the chief, yes. So it's not harassing or bullying a clerk if the chief judge takes exception to the action that was taken, right? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Well, here we have the situation where you're part of a complaint saying that Judge Cellini and Judge Tobias bullied you and harassed you. And the only thing that you've told us so far about Judge Cellini is the fact that her and Judge Bennett called you concerning moving this person, right? That's right. And you didn't do it. That's right. 
And Judge Shalimi had nothing to do with it beyond that, did she? Not to my knowledge. Not to your knowledge. No, I'm Judge Tobias. No, not to my knowledge. Same thing with Jose. That was a decision that was made by somebody higher than you. Correct. Right? And that was the chain. And there's nothing improper with that, is there? No. You may not like what the, the decision is, but, but you know how to accept it. That's You're true. a military person. That's true. We know when to salute and when not to salute, right? That's true. Okay. Now, one of the situations then is the Judge Cellini didn't go out and bully you, did she? No. Judge Tobias didn't go out and bully you, did she? I would say yes. What, that letter asking you to, that, that email asking you to wait until she got back? No, the letter that indicated that I had a relationship with two of my employees, that I had favoritism. Um, There's other things in there that... You didn't like? I didn't like it. I would consider harassment. Harassing you? Mm -hmm. What is your definition of harassment? If someone disagrees with you, that's harassment. Uh, disagreeing is not not one. The the last thing is that it appears that Marisa and Jose met the criteria for uh, incentive pay. Those incentive hours, correct? Yes. And but you made a determination on Jose and Marisa not to give it to them. That's true. And they complained. I, I think they complained to their judges, yes. Okay. And <clears throat> did you ever give it to them? I did not. Did someone else? I, I can't speak on that. Okay. The last thing I And let me, let me end this going back to being terminated. You just gave it one of the reasons that you were terminated, and, and this sort of jumped out at me, um, given other things you said in there. You said that you got terminated because you weren't a part of the good girls club. True. Well, who were the good girls? I think they were uh, Anna Vasquez, uh, Sherry Paris, uh, Griselle Hernandez, and so Anna had something to do with your firearms. I, I would say she probably did, yes. Okay, so they all had something to do with your, with your firearms. I would say yes. Okay, and so they must have had a reason for it. You'd have to ask them. But, well, don't you think they would have had to have a reason? I would, I would assume so, yes. But you don't put Judge Delaney in the good girls club, do you? I never thought about it. Well, here we are. You put in there, in, in your statements, I guess we're going to have to think about it now. She wasn't a member of this good girl's club, was she? I put her in a statement that she was part of the... Well, I'm sorry, I misunderstand you. Well, you put in your statement that you were terminated because you weren't part of the good girl's club. I asked you who were, the, were in the good girl's club, and you told me Anna and Sharon and Griselle. Correct. Right? And now I ask you, isn't it true that Judge Tulini isn't in what you call the good girl's club? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Right. And Judge Tobias said the same thing. Again, I wouldn't know. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, wait, just one thing. Were you the, the uh, acting administrator or the assistant when the uh, Coach and counseling notes came from Melody Lauren to Marisa. Yes, so I was acting at that point in time. Okay, and that just happens to be the next day after Judge Shalini talked to you. I can't remember. Well, you got the date there. <coughs> what day did you say they talked to you? Who no, did it Shalini? Back to my refresh my memory. Sure, go ahead. Uh, it's oh, one 
666. Okay, so that's 35. Okay, when did you get her letter? I, I'm not sure. It was the one you were just looking at. So this is dated from from uh, Melody March sixth. What's that? This is March sixth. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. So it was the day after. It's the day after Judge Cellini comes to you concerning <clears throat> the problem with Maggie Tucker. Yes. And then we have now Marisa getting a coaching counseling letter. Yes. I have nothing further. Thank you. Prosecuting counsel's recommends for redirect. We have nothing. Okay. Did the party you wish this witness to retain for possible re recall or is it going to be excused at this time? Yes, we ask you to retain. I have recross. <coughs> okay, we have some recross. Okay. Um, Mr. Churchill, I have well, this, this one second, Mr. Terry. I guess they didn't have they didn't have any redirect, so I'm not sure where your recross was. Did you get some additional question? <laughs> so uh, we'll go ahead and have the witness step down this time. Unless you want to, did you want to want to ask questions? Go ahead. Paul, are you Mr. Pizzero asked you to define the basket. What is your definition? I need you to hear it. I think I would have to think about it for a little bit, what harassment was, but right, well, let's talk about this email that you put in on Judge Devison. Which email are you referring to? Uh, the one she sent the supervisors. Take a look at it. Now, is this in reference to the Jose situation? Yes. Okay. And you are construing this email as harassment? Yes, that we're being, yes. Do you know what page it's on? No, I'm relying on you. You mentioned the email. Yes. Let me find it. Terry? Can you, sir, can you direct me to the exhibit that you're using with this, please? Or have somebody email you. <clears throat> Leave your testimony that was the email in reference to Jose to the supervisor. The supervisor. Was 
Estelle Hernandez had a role in the determination. Yes. Okay. Is that in part because you called her ignorant to her face? <coughs> no, I don't think so. Did you call her ignorant to her face? I don't remember that. You're not saying it didn't happen. You're just saying you don't remember it. Right, I don't remember it. That's right. I'll be perfect. Thanks. Okay. Redirect. Yeah, no. Okay. And you indicated you wanted the, the witness tell us of his brief call. Yes, please. Step down, sir. I'll just remind you that the rule of exclusion has been invoked, so you do not discuss your testimony with any of the other witnesses who might be outside. Okay. Okay. So I can step down. Next witness, Mr. Hutchins.